This is the Casio Salviano AP470 Digital Piano and in this video I will review it and let you know how it performs with regard to sound quality, key action, build quality and features. Destroy that like button and watch till the end of this video to find out if the AP470 is worth your money and who this digital piano is suitable for. At first glance, the features of the Salviano AP470 looks uncannily similar to Casio's previous PX870. That's because the AP470 is internally almost identical to a previous PX870, but with an additional grand piano sample, a traditional console cabinet, and a fancier speaker design. Let's start with the key action. The AP470 comes with 88 full-size scaled hammer action keys. Just like a traditional acoustic piano, the keys on the AP470 have a heavier feel on the lower register and gradually become lighter on the higher octaves. To better suit your playing style and technique, Casio has provided four configurable hammer response curves. Each key incorporates three sensors that enable a sound to be produced continuously even when the key has not fully returned to its resting position. An important feature when playing quick repeated notes on the same key. In my opinion, the AP470 key action is good, but Roland's PHA4 key action found on their recently released and similarly priced F701 is closer to a grand piano feel. The Casio has a relatively lighter action though, which some may prefer. I wish Casio had made their keys a little quieter and have lesser lateral movements. While it doesn't affect my playing, it can give a fussy pianist the perception that the keys aren't as tightly built as it should be. Both the black and white key tops of the AP470 are heavily textured to simulate the grain of ebony and ivory. I love the textured keys as I live in the humid tropics and my fingertips do get sweaty. These keys give me confidence when I play faster musical passages. I also like the little strip of red felt at the top of the keys that mimics a traditional piano. You can check out the description below to find out more about the digital pianos I mentioned in this video as well as my list of recommended pianos, keyboards and music learning apps. A big complaint I get from owners of previous generation Casio pianos is the short sample length, resulting in a quick sound decay. Thankfully, the Casio AP470 no longer suffers from this. The specification lists the AP470 with 22 inbuilt tones. In my opinion, this isn't entirely true. The actual number of sample is only 18. The two grand piano samples on the AP470 come in three different EQ, Concert, Bright and Mellow, and Casio counts each EQ variation as a new tone. Regardless, 18 tones is significantly more than Yamaha's similarly priced Arias YDP-164, which only comes with 10 tones. The grand piano and electric piano samples using Casio's AIR sound chip are above average, but the harpsichord, vibraphone, strings, and organ tones don't inspire me musically. While the AP470 has a key off simulator, this is only applied to the grand piano tones. The harpsichord lacks realism without key off sampling. It is no surprise that the grand piano sample also benefits from the configurable string resonance and damper noises. With 256 notes of polyphony, the Casio AP470 matches the Roland F701, but has an advantage over Yamaha's similarly priced Arias piano, which only comes with 192 notes of polyphony. <laughs> Thank you. 
voices on the AP470 can be layered and the layered volume mix can also be adjusted giving you the flexibility to sculpt the sound the way you want. However, when played in split mode, the only tone you get on the left side of the keyboard is an acoustic bass sound. I wish Casio gave the AP470 the flexibility to assign any tone to the keyboard split which the similarly priced Roland F701 can do. It would have been nice if Casio included an electric bass tone for contemporary music too. Smash that like button if you agree with me. To tweak the tones to sound the way you want, the Casio AP470 has chorus effects and a hall simulator, which is a fancy marketing term for reverb effects. There are unique DSP effects which are specifically applied onto each tone. It would have been nice if Casio tells us what DSP effects is applied and gives us a way to turn DSP off or configure it. But that isn't the case. One of the selling points of the Casio AP470 is the Grand Piano Lit Simulator feature. This is implemented in two ways. Firstly, the resonance of the Grand Piano sample can be configured electronically to sound like it's recorded with the Grand Piano lid open or closed. Secondly, the AP470 has a physical lid which you can lift open or close to shape the sound coming out from the speakers. The physical lid may look like a gimmick, but it isn't. Let me explain. The AP470 has four speakers driven by a pair of amplifiers with a total power of 40 watts. There are a total of five places the sound from the speakers are routed. You get a pair of circular speaker cutouts below the piano, a pair of thin slits just above the keys, and a nice red speaker grill on top of the piano covered by an articulating lid. With the lid closed, the sound is noticeably more intimate and mellow. With the lid open, you get a spacious and brighter tone that is delivered directly to the pianist's ears. Basic functions such as selecting tones and using the metronome are accessible via buttons and silkscreen labeled keys. Accessing all other features require you to refer to the manual to figure out which keys correspond to a function. Without an LCD screen, you have no way to tell which tone is selected, which effect is applied, and if the keyboard has been transposed, etc. You get the point. I hope the next Casio piano model will have an LCD screen like the one found on the similarly priced Roland F701. While Casio has a mobile app that shows you all these information on the large screen of a tablet, the lack of wireless connectivity makes it inconvenient. In this day and age, wireless Bluetooth MIDI and Bluetooth audio should be standard as it makes connecting a smartphone app to the piano more friction-free. The built-in two-track MIDI recorder is basic but easy to use. What is more useful for most piano players is the USB audio recorder. With this feature, you can conveniently record your performance directly onto a USB stick and carry your audio recordings everywhere with you. I like the two quarter inch headphones jack and the hook for hanging your headphones. The USB port for your USB stick is also conveniently located for easy access. I wish Casio made the music rest feel more premium and with more tilt angles to suit pianists of different heights. The AP470 is available in three different colors, black, oak, and white. This simulated wood laminate has a nice 3D textured grain compared to competing brands where the wood grain is just merely printed on. Now, 
who is the Casio AP474? If you want your digital piano to look like a traditional upright acoustic piano and portability isn't an issue, the AP470 is for you. If you're just starting out and do not want to spend too much money, the AP470 is also for you. If you don't often use many other voices besides the piano and electric piano sound, this digital piano is for you. If you like the nostalgic textured feel of real ivory and ebony keys, Casio has the most textured keys in the market. If you want a simulated directional sound projection of a grand piano lid, this Casio AP470 does just that. I have links in the description to all the different models I mentioned in this video, as well as my list of recommended pianos, keyboards, and music learning apps. It costs you nothing to smash that like button if you found my review useful and appreciate my effort. My name is Jeremy C, and I'll see you in my next video.